thank God for the reading of his uh, precious word. Cities of Refuge is the title of today's uh, exhortation taken from Numbers 35, verses 1 to 34. We have three thoughts. Provision, verse 1 to 14. Protection, verse 15 to 24. And pardoned, verse 25 to 34. There is in the mind of God provision to protect the innocent in the land. These are places of asylum for innocent persons who had, without premeditation, killed someone. They could flee to the nearest city of them and find refuge and receive true judgment of his situation. These cities were so situated, located on main roads with clear signs that everyone knew where they were. This privilege not only provided mercy to the innocent, but it restrained the tribal law of blood revenge until a manslayer had received a true judgment. Murder and manslaughter are distinguished for us in our text in verse 16 to 34. And murder is a terrible crime, but innocent manslaughter is serious, but not to be considered without understanding and mercy, O.T. Spence. So you see that this was stipulated uh, first at the giving of the law at Mount Sinai to Israel. So the cities of refuge were not mentioned until here in Numbers 35 in detail when uh, God specified the cities are located to the Levites, of which are 48, and of them, six cities of refuge. The law stipulated in Mount Sinai to Israel in Exodus 21, verses 12 to 14, gives to us this provision, the reason for this establishment of these cities of refuge. Exodus 21, verse 12 to 14 says, he that smiteth a man so that he die shall be surely put to death. And if a man lie not in wait, but God deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint thee a place whither he shall flee. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor and slay him with gall, thou shalt take him from my altar that he may die. Here is given to us the provision uh, of God for the man slayer to be given a proper trial. Among the 48 cities given to the Levites were these six cities of refuge. And these cities were mentioned four times at the, before Israel entered the promised land. Uh, first, here in our text, in verse 6 of Numbers 35. Then there is also Deuteronomy 4, 41 to 43, and Joshua 20, verse 1 to 9. And 1 to 20, of which uh, we shall see verse 7 and 8. Um, but First, we look at verse 6 of Deuteronomy 35. Here it is said, And among the cities which ye shall give unto the Levites, there shall be six cities of refuge, which ye shall appoint for the manslayer, that he may flee hither to them. Ye shall add forty and two cities. And Deuteronomy 4, 41 to 43. Then Moses said, three cities on this side Jordan toward the sun rising that the slayer might flee hither which should kill his neighbours, his neighbour unawares and hated him not in times past and that fleeing unto one of these cities 
he might live. Namely, Beza in the wilderness, in the plain country of the Reubenites, and Ramoth in Gilead, and Golan of the Gedites, and Golan in Bashan of the Manassites. And then in Joshua 20, verse 7 to 8, is given Kadesh in Galilee, in Mount Naphtali, Shechem in Mount Ephraim, and Kerja Abba in Hebron. And so here you would be able to see um, these are the appointed uh, cities, and we have placed there the map uh, that gives the six cities uh, at the end of your notes. Uh, to help us to identify uh, these cities that uh, God has uh, sought for the manslayer to be given a fair trial. So here you see Kadesh right up north, then there is Shechem uh, and Hebron on the western side of the uh, Jordan River and on the eastern side. There is Golan, there is Ramoth, and there is Biza. So these are the uh, six strategically located uh, cities of refuge. The nation of Israel had an army, but it didn't have anything equivalent to our modern police system. If somebody was murdered, members of the family and clan saw to it that the murderer was punished. So the, uh, the exacting of the vengeance uh, was left to the, to the family, to the tribe. However, if a man accidentally killed someone, that it was a case of manslaughter, not murder, it would have been wrong to make him pay with his life. The man could flee to one of these cities of refuge and present his case to the elders who would hear him and the witnesses. And if they thought he was guilty of murder, they would turn him to the family and the authority for punishment. If they concluded that he was innocent, they would allow him to stay in the city of refuge under their protection until the death of the high priest. Then he was free to return home. He was not allowed to pay a ransom and be freed any sooner. This is uh, the thought that was given here by Wesby. And um, as we ponder the reason uh, behind the establishing of the cities of refuge, we are given a glimpse of how the Lord Christ shelters helpless ones, those who are innocent of any crime but have that appearance of being guilty. They are being protected, as it were, by God himself. Exodus 21 verse 13. If a man lie not in wait, but God deliver him unto his hand. So here <clears throat> we see uh, that it was the Lord who will uh, appoint a place where he would be able to flee and find help. In Deuteronomy 19, verse 2 to 9, uh, the Lord gives the reason. Thou shalt separate three cities for thee in the midst of thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it. Thou shalt prepare a way and divide the coast of thy land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to inherit, into three parts, that every slayer may flee hither. And this is the case of the slayer, we shall flee hither, that he may live. Whosoever killeth his neighbour ignorantly, whom he hated not in the past, as when a man goeth into the wood with his neighbour to hewn wood, 
and his hand fetched a stroke with the axe to cut down the tree, and the head slippeth from the health, and lighteth upon his neighbour that he die, he shall flee unto one of those cities and live. So here is given an example uh, of uh, how the man had no intention to kill, uh, but uh, there was something that happened. Uh, uh, so the person died. As when a man goeth into the wood, so he lighteth upon his neighbour that he die, he shall flee into one of those cities and live, lest the avenger of blood pursue the slayer, while his heart is hot and overtake him, because the way is long and slay him, whereas he was not worthy of death. Uh, here is given to us the thought, uh, the man is not worthy of death, shouldn't be killed, inasmuch as he hated him not in the past. So that was the basis whereby uh, we, uh, the Lord assess uh, whether a person is a murderer or a man slayer. Um, Wherefore I command thee, saying, Thou shalt separate three cities for thee, and if the Lord thy God enlarge thy coast, as he hath sworn unto thy fathers, and give thee all the land which he promised unto thy fathers, if thou shalt keep all these commandments to do them, which I command thee this day to love the Lord thy God and to walk ever in his ways, then shalt thou add three cities more for thee besides these three. The Bible is uh, scattered with many uh, situations of God uh, standing up, helping the weak. Psalm 46 verse 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Psalm 142 verse 5, I cried unto thee, O Lord, I said, Thou art my refuge and my portion in the land of the living. So you see here, God um, does provide in a very practical way to protect the innocent. Romans 8 verse 1, Therefore, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. So the Lord um, does make a difference. Right? And be found in him not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that, that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. So here is given to us the principle. But there is a related uh, truth uh, that we would like to point out in Deuteronomy 21, verse 1 to 9. If one be found slain in the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee to possess it, lying in the field, and it be not known who hath slain him. So the person died, but you don't know who the culprit is because the person was just found dead somewhere. Right? Here was described for us a, a remote place. Then thy elders and thy judges shall come forth and they shall measure unto the cities which are round about him that is slain. And it shall be that the city which is next unto the slain man, the nearest city, even the elders of that city shall take a heifer which hath not been wrought with and which hath not drawn in the yoke. And the elders of that city shall bring down the heifer into the rough valley which is neither year nor sown, and shall strike off the heifer's neck there in the valley, and the priests and the sons of Levi shall come near for them. The Lord thy God has chosen to minister unto him and to bless in the name of the Lord, and by their word shall every controversy and every stroke be tried. And all the elders of that city that are next unto the slain man shall wash their hands over the heifer, that is beheaded in the valley, and he shall answer and say, Our hands have not shed this blood, neither have our eyes seen it. Be merciful, O Lord, unto thy people Israel, 
whom thou hast redeemed, and lay not innocent blood unto thy people of Israel's charge, and the blood shall be forgiven them, so shalt thou put away the guilt of innocent blood from among you, when thou shalt do that which is right in the sight of God. So there is this as this part of a person who has died and you don't know why, then there is a need for an uh, accountability too. And how was that accounted? Well, the one, uh, the city that is nearest to the place where the man died, right, the, uh, the cities, that those cities would be held uh, responsible. And if they uh, were able to find well, that there is no mischief, in other words, uh, they, don't, they couldn't determine right, what was the cost of the person's death. Right? The person's death might be just uh, a person uh, simply uh, fall and collapse and die. Uh, or there could be some mischief. That, that took place. So the investigation would have been done and if there is no mischief, then the, the city uh, and its people uh, would have to take uh, uh, an animal, uh, the heifer here, uh, the, to be killed uh, and then to Okay, the, 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 the heifer is to be killed in a valley, right? uh, in a place called, well, they said it's a rough valley. In other words, it's not a place where they plant any crops, uh, not a pasture ground. Uh, but there, uh, they would kill the animal and then the blood is shed. And, and, and then um, uh, they would... Uh, uh, wash their hands uh, to, to signify uh, that they were not partakers uh, of the uh, murder or, or of the death uh, or that, of that person. It is, they are not responsible, they are not culpable. Uh, so that uh, uh, by this blood, it will be uh, forgiven them uh, because an innocent man did die in their vicinity. Okay. So that's the first thought. And protection. Uh, protection. Uh, from verse 15 to 24. And so here, uh, as we were explaining, I, uh, that the person who, who died, uh, that is innocent uh, um, or that um, well the city is not responsible for uh, what has taken place for that person then uh, and they are unable to locate the criminal then they would also be exempt from their responsibility and the land would not sustain the pollution if anybody died, and if the cause is not determined, then uh, there's a question mark over what happened. Okay? But here, uh, the way that the Lord places is to ensure right, that this uh, due process is, is done. So anybody who dies is accounted for, in other words, in the land. Uh, and Spence said well, he says, we should not ignore, ignore the beauty of this ceremony in setting forth uh, a beautiful type of Christ. There is a sad counterpart in the fact of the crucifixion of the Jews who said his blood be upon us and upon our children. And here the Lord's reply to them was, Father, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And so here, uh, 
it may be observed uh, that nobody knows exactly where which individual killed the Lord. There are many who are involved. Right? Uh, there, there is Judas uh, who first betrayed him. There's Malchus, the guy who came and took the Lord. There is Caiaphas, the high priest, who uh, said he was guilty. Then there was Pilate, right, who uh, ordered his, uh, his scourging and finally his crucifixion. Uh, so all, this were, all these people, uh, in that sense, were culpable. Right, culpable. Right, but what did the Lord say? The Lord uh, said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Well, here, uh, as the Peter puts it in Acts 3, verse 14 and 15, but he denied the Holy One when he, when he, when he spoke to the Jews uh, concerning this. He said, but he denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the Prince of Life, whom God hath raised from the dead whereof we are witnesses. So the Jews were guilty, but the Lord did die, but He rose again from the dead. You see here how evil could not, could not finally find its place in the realm of God because God provided through Christ the way out. Okay. So that brings us to the third thought, huh? pardon and punishment. Pardon and punishment. Uh, from verse 55 to 34, uh, it says here, the manslayer may be given a pardon when the high priest dies. In this way, God made provision to protect the innocent who may have killed someone, but not with intention. Such a one should not be tried as a murderer. Provision is made for his pardon at the death of the high priest. The length of the sentence, therefore, is in the hands of God, who decides when pardon is being given as he appoints the time of life and death. In that sense, the manslayer is kept in God's sphere and await God's time for his release. Right, so God made a provision for his uh, release. Uh, it is the death of the high priest. And so here uh, is the provision that God made uh, for the manslayer. Uh, he can be pardoned. But if a man is guilty, right, which uh, we see, and emphasize here again uh, from verse 31 right up to the end, then he was to be stoned to death. Right? Uh, murder was a capital crime in Israel for which there was no ransom. You cannot buy yourself out of a, a, a blood debt, a blood debt. So, <coughs> The blood of the innocent victim polluted the land, and the land belongs to the Lord. Genesis 4 verse 10. And he said, Where hast thou done? What hast thou done? The voice of thy brother's blood, that's evil, crieth unto me from the ground. Right? This was the Lord's word to Cain, who slayed his brother. And Genesis 9 verse 5, And surely your blood of your lives will I require at the hand of every beast, will I require at the hand of man, at the hand of every man's brother, will I require the life of a man. So you realize here how God is just. God protects the innocent. God makes provision for the helpless. And you also see how the Lord uh, 
allow uh, in his own time the release for the manslayer at the death of the high priest. Such was the provision made by the Lord to protect the innocent in the land. Amen.